All right, so I want to bring in now Mark Garagos. He's a criminal defense attorney, co-host of the podcast Reasonable Doubt with Adam Carolla. He is also a good friend of the show. So your hot take on this whole notion about Ron Logan and everything you heard from Connie Dillman. As a defense attorney, I mean, are you salivating? What do you think about it? Well, you're, uh, you, the immediate reaction is there's a concept called third-party liability. If you have somebody who you believe is a, um, a good for it, a suspect, then you've got to get over the hurdle of uh, making the proffer to the judge that you want to point the finger at somebody else. This is about as good if it checks out, if the investigation checks out, um, and it, it sounds like it might. This is a pretty good uh, case of third-party liability. You know, the, the fact that she's an ex cuts both ways. I often tell clients, um, or I've told you, uh, that sometimes it's the ex that always will come forward and do you in, so to speak. It's also, it gives fodder to somebody who wants to make an accusation that you have an ax to grind. So, you know, and in this case, you've got somebody who's passed away, and so it's easy, you know, the old expression, dead men tell no tales. But this is pretty good stuff, in especially when you combine it with the fact that he was a person of interest. And then, as you mentioned, this tropical fish apocryphal story uh, of his so-called alibi. You don't get much better than that for third-party liability. Also, you know, you know better than anyone what it's like to talk to a jury. And there's a reason we ask people to get up on the stand so that we can look them in the eye, hear their story, and get our gut in order about whether they're telling the truth. We all have good spidey senses, and a lot of people are not good liars. I watched her, and I felt she was very believable in, in what she was saying. So that brings me to the trial, and whether we will see Connie Dillman and hear her story. Is this the kind of evidence that can be, be limited, can be actually suppressed at trial, or will the prosecutors, um, you know, what, what will their story be? How will they, how will they deal with this? Well, that's why I bring up the. You're always so sharp when it when it comes to these legal things. The I I use the doctrine of third party liability. That is a hurdle the defense has to get over. The defense has to uh, get the judge to allow them to point the finger at somebody else to say a third party is good for it, and to put on that evidence. As long as the judge allows that, then the prosecutions can be back on their heels. But what do they do? How does the prosecution, if it does make it into trial, how does the prosecution accommodate for that? Just say she's a disgruntled? She's a disgruntled ex. I mean, that's exactly mm. where it's... You know, and I was thinking about it, uh, Ashley, as I was watching that, you never know how these things come back to bite you. The Fawning Willis case, for instance, when they had the Nathan Wade's ex-partner up there, you heard him on direct, you thought one thing. Then the prosecutor got up there and started talking about the accusation towards him, and that threw everything into uh, into a, a flurry. So that can happen in a trial. You'll get up there, you'll hear this guarantee you the prosecution will do everything possible to try to discredit her because the last thing they want is somebody who is not the defendant who they've invested all their resources in up there pointing the finger and saying, well, no, actually, it's somebody else. And by the way, another reason which ties this all together that a jury might like that is he's now dead. And so there's no way to call him to defend himself or anything else. If you're the defense, this really makes some uh, quite a bit of sense. Yeah, there's so much more I want to talk to you about. Um, we're out of time on this, but we're going to have to get you back on this particular story. I do want to ask you about the confessions that Richard Allen supposedly made on the jailhouse phone uh, to, to his family member. But that's for another night. Uh, Mark Aragos, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.